Hey there, this is Gookie from Next Architecture. In this video, I will share with you how to use Next Scatter add on, which is a part of Next Sketch Pack, which includes many other add ons like Next Street and Next Scatter, and two other add ons that we will announce about them soon. This add on is used to scatter objects in your scene using the scattering and the instancing systems. For example, Let's add a plane to work on and scale it up a bit and make sure to apply the scale. Let's check out the assets panel where we have a plenty of assets to choose from such as grass, plants and flowers. Let's try adding grass group 3 and click on append. So we have to make a custom instance for it so we need to select the object and click on custom instance button. The instances list will show up so let's choose the object that we want to work on here. Let's remove these for now and select our object and choose one of the assets we have and click on instance button. It will be automatically added on the selected object. You can control many factors for the instancing. You can control the density, increase it or decrease it to however you like. Fix center is to automatically reset the origin point to the center. When you set it to 1, it will fix it, and you can keep it on 0 if you don't need fixing it. Generate is to randomize the seed of the object. Scale is to control the size of the objects. Control the minimum scale and the maximum scale to make different variations of scale. Distance minimum is to control the spacing between the objects. Like when we increase it, the spacing becomes much more. When we decrease it, the spacing becomes much less, which makes the grass look realistic. And random rotation will randomly rotate the objects to many ways. You can play with this one to find the look that fits your scene. Let me just tweak some things here. Viewport density. We can use this setting to minimize the pressure on the viewport. It will take away some objects, but it will not affect the render of the scene or the quality of it. For example, let me render the view. You can see all the grass and the image is full quality and it looks great. I'm putting it back to 100. We have these two icons here. This one is if you want to hide or unhide the objects from the scene. And this one if you want these objects to be rendered or not. So for now, I'm hiding this object from the scene and moving it away because we are going to scatter another object. So I have a couple of rocks here which I want to use to scatter them on the plane object. So I'm selecting these objects and since scatter works on collections, I'm adding these rocks to a collection. So press M to move them to a new collection and name it. And then in the add-on menu, let's choose our new collection and click on scatter. So we have two ways to scatter objects around in the scene, cursor and surface. Cursor is to draw freely anywhere you want, and surface is to draw directly on the surface of any object. Let me scatter some rocks here, and from here let's choose the object that we drew on. So like, when we move the rocks, it will only be moved around on the surface. You may tweak and play with the settings until you find the look that you're looking for. Now we have zoning, which basically works like randomizing the object's places around the area. When we play around with this clamping factor, it will determine how much grass objects will show. You can set it to however you like, depending on the look of your scene. You can also draw with the weight paint to manually select where the grass objects should be and where they shouldn't be. It will not let me draw now because First, we need the object that we are drawing on to be subdivided. So right click, choose subdivide and put the subdivision level to 50. So now you can draw on the places where you want to remove grass from it. For better drawing results, we should change the fall off brush to this one and draw with it. You can see the rendered look on the left side here. Now let's switch back to object mode and remove the weight paint we just drew. Now let's talk about optimization. First thing we have is camera cooling. It will basically only show a specific distance of the objects. 
to optimize the scene and lower the pressure on your hardware. As if we rotate the camera now, only the camera view distance will be rendered in the viewport. We can increase or decrease the camera offset slider to what matches your preferences. Next we have the LOD toggle. Let's enable it and add this asset for example. Let's choose the asset we just added right here. Because now the view distance is so high we cannot see the differences. So we need to tweak the distance to something around 10 meters. You may adjust it to whatever suits you to optimize your scene. Last thing we have is the proxy, which will basically turn the objects to cubes, which will make the working area smoother and faster to work with. This will not affect the final render, it will still look on the final rendered image. Next we have animation. We have two kinds of animations, light and heavy. For example, let's put the speed to 1 and the distance to 2. So now if we press on play, we can see the animation of the grass now slowly moving which is affected by the wind factor and the direction of it. Now I want to add some flowers, so we select the plane object and choose the flowers asset and click on instance. Make sure you are selecting the asset you want to work on and tweak some settings as you like. Ok, let's edit its animation. Basically click on animation panel and choose light and set the speed to 1 and the distance to 3. And that's how it looks like. We see this black area right here and it's because of the light paths are really low in the scene settings. So we just need to increase that up for better rendering view. Last thing we are going to talk about is that if you want to scatter another object that's not included in the assets menu, you might lose the UV of the object, so you need to add the UV fix node inside its shader. So for example, I have scattered these rocks, so I will select them, and then from the shader editor I will restore its UV, so I need to select the node I want to add the UV fix before. Then from node menu in the end panel, Click on add next UV node button. Finally you just need to reconnect the original UV to the attribute input. So now it looks perfect and ready to use. And that's it for this tutorial. We hope that this tutorial was very helpful for you and thank you for watching. Here are some of the comments from people who liked our previous add-ons. As a thank you gift from us for reaching 200 subscribers, we are announcing a free add-on very soon. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel and check on all of our social media accounts and follow our updates and see you in the next video.